I'm a second as a film about Matilda, a depressed girl who seeks happiness by writing to a deceased classmate Alma. Upon realizing she's created an illusion to protect herself, she grows frustrated and ruins Alma's altar. After realizing her mistake, she finally finds the company she'd been looking for all along. Alma Seca is named obviously after the character of Alma, but it also translates to dry soul in Spanish, which is what depression can often feel like. This film is an answer to some of the recurring problems in my life. My fight to fill my own dry soul, the fact that many people bring their problems to me like I'm the only one who can help them, the way I try to find meaning by losing myself in others. The film is quite personal to me, and while I won't go into depth about those problems, I hope the film can speak for itself. I present Alma Seca, the exclusive interview hosted by Javier Zamora Cruz. How do interviews even start? I've never done an interview before. <laughs> I'm, I'm there. No. I'm at the oh wait, aren't we supposed to have the background noise off? Sima, por favor. Before. I want to tell you something, but I. I want to tell you something, but I can't laugh. Tell me what. No this way. is director me. Mm-hmm. What's serious. the best? Serious. Don't tell me that. I'm gonna laugh. I should sit like this on my double chin. Doesn't show. I should just what look down. <laughs> what are you gonna say? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, mate. <laughs> Mom irresistible, irresistible, but everybody's just gonna have to wait their turn to get a little chance to talk to me. Thank you. That concludes our interview. I have something to ask you first. Do I look sexy in this lighting? I wouldn't be able to do this interview without my nature made iron pills. What is that sound? Oh, it's just me. <laughs> My first question to you would be, what inspired you to make this film? You know what? That's a really good question. Um, all right. Well, the first, the concept of the film first came to be from a dream I had. Um, and ironically, the dream was split into two movie scenes. Stop laughing. <laughs> 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 so the dream was split into two scenes. And in the first scene, quote unquote, of the movie, um, of the dream, I mean, movie dream, um, I was in the, stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the first scene of the of the of the dream that I had, um, I was just in the uniform that I wear in the final film. You know, like a blue skirt and the blue um, blue sweatshirt with this shirt also, whatever, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. I was wearing that school uniform, and I was just in the bathroom crying. Actually, the thing is about dreams is weird that I don't know if it was me or if it was somebody else. Stop that. <laughs> Yeah, in that first scene of the of the dream, I was just like in the bathroom of like a school bathroom. It was very clean, to be honest. It was like a tiled blue bathroom, and I was just like on the floor crying or something like that. <clears throat> I wanted to include that in the final film, but you know, um, I was filming at a park and I didn't have access to a school, so the bathrooms at the at, um, Elysian Park are obviously very filthy. I planned to put down a rug on the floor, but then I just and then I just ended up not even doing it. Because, I mean, first of all, they're filthy. And second of all, I had limited time, so why would I waste my time crying on a dirty bathroom floor? Um, the second scene of the dream was, um, it, felt like I, it felt like I was watching a movie and like the first scene took place in the middle of the movie. And then the second scene took place like right at the end, like it was the end, end scene of the movie, quote unquote. So in this scene... <coughs> I was with an old friend, uh, an old middle school friend, um, and we were at the doors of a school, and uh, the the exit doors were right next to a student store, um, and then at the student store there were just like um, chips, just like I don't know, I don't know, just like on racks or something like that, and I was talking to this friend, and then we were looking out. It was the last day of school, and we were just looking out. Um, the school was overlooking a hill. It was really beautiful and it was like it was like after it had rained 
the bell rang and my my middle school friend and I we just looked at each other and we I don't know I, like she stole a bag of chips as we ran out and I also stole a bag and then everybody started stealing a bag and we just ran out ran down the hill and that was the end so the original dream came from that concept but I kind of expanded upon it um, because um, well, I just felt um, every artist feels at some point like they have to do something with their art and express a deeper meaning so I got to that point with my film where, well, I had to expand, expand upon the idea. I couldn't build a film off of just two scenes, you know? I personally felt like I wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel fulfilled. I needed to convey a message through this film. That's, and that's what the original concept of the film came from. How was the filmmaking process for you? Was there anything you learned? So, obviously, this is the first film I've ever made. Actually, I have been in a film before. Um, there's this renowned director in my area named Javier Josue Zamora. And, um, cool. yeah, yeah, Samora Cruz, you're right, uh-huh. And I, I was an actor, actress in his film. But, um, I wasn't really behind any of the, like, really the creative filming process, so I didn't really, um, I, I got my first real filming experience from this project. Um, the filming lasted from, let's see, well, the whole project itself began in January. And it ended just now in, in June. And we started filming from around, I think, March. I had planned to film from the beginning of March, but I started filming at the end of March. And I ended up doing, um, let's see. Um, okay, I think I ended up doing um, eight or nine days of filming. But because, because the park was not close to the house, um, it was very, very scarce um filming it was like very 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 spread out throughout the months with between march april may and uh june so yeah and the creative process how was the creative process for me well i i feel that um at some point i felt like i had lost sight of what really um the film was what was really about the message i felt like um i was being influenced by other people about how the film should be and i was also myself Kind of cutting corners a bit <clears throat> but then i have a beloved friend jocelyn yes yes gonzalez and she led me back to the road of what the original concept of the film would be like i shot <laughs> look at la oh my god this is downtown this is the Dodgers stadium <laughs> how's the filmmaking process for you anything you learned oh yeah i learned plenty i learned i could trust jocelyn for that <laughs> um um, well, yeah, I also learned about, um, um, about composing shots. I learned about all the work it really takes to put into a movie, the lighting, the, the angles, the shots, the, the noise, you know, the audio or whatever, all of that. Also, one main thing I learned is that Vaseline, it's a, it's a cheap way to smudge the, um, you know, make the film blurrier and give it a dream, like a dream, like quality. But I also learned um that has a very inconsistent like it has a lot of inconsistency so that's why you'll see some of the scenes like way more blurry than the others and there's not really a way for me to see when i was like outside and in direct sunlight it was like hard for me to see the screen the phone screen so i wasn't really sure like how blurry it was so yeah uh-huh that explains some inconsistency in the blurriness and yeah that's what i learned oh i also learned to paint a little bit this was one of the props, but sadly, it wasn't like really in direct um, view of the camera. It was in a shot, definitely. It was in um, part of Alma's altar, but it wasn't really. Anyways, there was a lot I learned from this painting, mainly that I'm not going to paint ever again. Do you have any regrets or mistakes that you wish you could fix from the film? Okay, so um, I already mentioned the inconsistency in the Vaseline. I think if I had more time, like from now, and if I had to do this project again, and if I had like from now, June until December to film it, I would definitely buy a soft focus lens rather than use the Vaseline. Because like I said, it's very um, inconsistent in its, um, well, yeah, it has a lot of inconsistency in it. But uh, besides that, what else would I do? I would also spend way more time filming because there were a lot of scenes that like I was honestly dissatisfied with, but I had no way of, 
you know, going back and fixing them because by the time that I was editing it, I was in the last week. So I didn't really have a lot of time to do that. All, there were also two scenes I omitted. Um, one of them was a scene that took place that was supposed to take place in our backyard. And I really thought that was the first scene I was going to film because I was like, oh, it's, it's nearby. Like, I'll, I'll get to it eventually. I'll get to it eventually. I'll get to it eventually. Then it was the last day of filming. And I was like, oh, I, I don't have time for that anymore. There was also the bathroom scene. You know what? If I had more time, I think I would have included that scene because it was part of the original vision of the film. Um, another mistake. What else did I do? Um, I think a mistake I made was that um, this kind of ties into the message of, of the film. But I kind of took it a little bit too much to heart. Which, like, like I said, we'll expand upon it later. But I took the message a little too much to heart. And I didn't ask anybody for help. And I think I would definitely... Now that I know who to ask for help, I would definitely ask to ask them for help um, rather than try to do the whole film alone. It is a very difficult process to do alone. Like, it's possible to do it alone. I definitely think um, a lot of people are equipped with that kind of skill. I think I could do it too, make the whole film alone. But it would just be, like, harder. And if I were to do it alone, like, you know, I would also take more time to do the film. Uh, to do filming, I mean. In that scene where Matilda rushes out to meet that girl in the red sweater, and then in the next scene when she is wearing the red sweater, what's the significance of that? What does that scene mean? I mean, I, I tried not to spell a lot of things out in the film. I also didn't want to leave people confused, but I didn't spell a lot of things out. I, I just didn't want to over-explain. I tend to have... I, I tend to over-explain a lot of things. I didn't want that to go over to my film. If you'll notice in the end credit scene, my actress, Jocelyn Yes, star of the film obviously um um she is listed as future matilda and um i'm not sure what i listed myself as just regular matilda or something i don't know but it doesn't matter um so yeah that's what well the thing is that with a dream this film is you know meant to mimic a dream so there's not really like it's not necessarily that she's future Matilda. There's no, um, dreams are more, more blurry, you know? So it's not necessarily that there was a future Matilda and a past Matilda. Um, but it's just that they were both Matilda, you know? Um, it's not necessarily that she was an alter ego. It's not that she was uh, the spirit of Matilda or the soul. It's just that they're, they're just both Matilda, you know? Through the fact that the my actress, Jocelyn Yes, had the red sweater in one scene and then in the next scene i had the red sweater that was just meant to hopefully clarify that both of these people are matilda i don't remember how the theme song went so yeah and like i um that that sort of plays into the message of the film speaking of the message uh is there any message that you'd like to leave the audience with after watching this film thank you for asking that first of all um so as you'll see the quote i included by what's his name ralph waldo emerson um what he said is nothing can bring you peace but yourself at least i hope that's what the quote is i hope i'm not misquoting him um well the message of the film is that truly something that i learned something that i that is very important to me is um i personally this movie is very personal to me so excuse me if i use the word personal a lot personally have you know i've always felt a bit disconnected from a lot of from from my peers and stuff like that even from close friends i feel like there's just a there's just always a bit of a wall between me and people so because of that like intense feeling of disconnect i've always felt kind of you know kind of like a deep loneliness to be honest um and because of that loneliness i've often seeked out um i have this bad habit of latching on to just like just one person at a time and that can tend to overwhelm them and you know that's a bad habit I'm trying to work on and anyway something I learned um, last year through this last year through this whole entire situation pandemic what I mean is pandemic um, something I learned about this is that sometimes it's it's true that you really have no one sometimes the only person that you have is yourself and well, it might be sad, but I mean, it's true. It's true, you know. Um, sometimes you're the only person who can help you out of a situation. And that's what that quote is meant to mean. Sometimes you are the only person who can help you. And at first, when I first realized that, it made me very sad. It's kind of, it's kind of grown to be empowering to me. 
that like I am the only person that is responsible for me nobody can take that from me so I think that's kind of the message I would like to leave the audience with you know with the quote nothing can bring you peace but yourself if you have a problem you know you have the power to fix it it the the, the problem wouldn't be placed in front of you unless you could take it and you know obviously friends are important Jocelyn and my brother who happens to be the one interviewing me and my dad too um, they all they all helped me with the filming the the movie the, the movie and uh, you know obviously it was my film teacher that gave me a lot of direction and showed me what to do with the film um, you know I had a lot of help from the people around me but obviously the, the movie the film would have never been the concept would have never come come tr come to be without me without my dream and it would have never come to the screen without me you know it all kind of ties back to me like you know i can't i can't live without myself obviously you know but let me see besides that is there any message i would like to leave the audience with mm. well yeah you are you are in charge of your own destiny obviously there are a lot of things that are out of your control um i i, I don't want to minimize anyone's struggles but i want to mean it as an empowering way like you're in charge of yourself you know Thank you. And thank you. No thank. Hey, oh. Who? While you can't ever take full control of how a situation will go, you can always choose to take control of yourself. You can always sleep soundly at night knowing you have full, complete control of the choices you make in any situation. And that is my parting message. Special thank you to those who helped with the film. Jocelyn, Javierito, Mipa and Mr. Rodriguez. And if you've made it this far, a special thank you to you too. Thank you for listening. Until next time, dry your tears.